Hello, I'm Dave, and in this video, I'll be explaining what the basic picture controls do on 4K TVs, giving you an idea of how they work. And this is basically a general guide that covers settings that you'll find on the majority of HD TVs out there, 4K or not. So let's get straight into it. The first setting is backlight. Well, basically on LED LCDs, this will usually be called backlight or backlight adjust. Whereas if you have, say, an OLED, or on certain plasma TVs. This may be called OLED light, or say, panel luminance, panel brightness adjustment. Basically, what is it? Well, it's simple. The backlight control enables us to increase or decrease the light output of the TV, thus making the picture brighter for, say, daytime viewing, or making it darker if you're gonna be viewing at night or in a very dark room. Pretty straightforward, that one. Next up on our list, we have contrast. Now, despite the name, this doesn't actually change the native contrast performance of the actual panel. What contrast actually does is adjust the digital white level. So, for example, if you raise the contrast slider, you'll note that the actual shades of white can sometimes become merged, and you'll basically get clipping so that you'll lose details in bright parts of the picture. But sometimes the image will appear to have more pop. And likewise, if you reduce this setting, what will happen is you'll start dimming whites and introducing discoloration, thus also losing a certain degree of contrast as well. The next one is brightness, and there's a lot of common misconceptions about this control. I mean, it's labeled brightness, but physically, it doesn't actually increase or decrease the brightness of the TV at all. Basically, on modern flat panels, brightness relates to black level adjustment. You use this to adjust the black clipping point, so for example, if you raise the control too much, your black levels will become gray and the picture will start to wash out. And some people perceive this as basically producing a brighter image, even though that's not really the case. And likewise, if you reduce brightness too much, you'll introduce clipping, where more dark shades of detail are lost and the perceived effect is a darker picture. Next up we have color, which is basically a global saturation control for both primary and secondary colors. So as you'd expect, increasing this raises the vividness of all the colors on show, whereas reducing it basically mutes them. And to go along with that, there's also the tint option. Again, this is a global setting which adjusts the tone of all the colors. So you can usually shift, say, the colors towards green or perhaps red. And that brings me on to color temperature. Most TVs give you an option for say normal, cool, warm one, warm two. So what is it? Well, basically it controls the mixture of red, green, and blue in the grayscale. A warm color temperature will emphasize the amount of red or increase it, thus giving skin tones say a more sun-baked look. Whereas selecting cool, for example, will emphasize the blue component. So skin tones may look quite pale. Next up we have sharpness. Now back in the days of the old CRT TVs, this option used to be used to focus the electron beam onto the actual shadow mask. Basically you increase the sharpness to dial in the focus and create a crisper, sharper image. But on modern day flat panels like this Panasonic DX750 here, that's not the case. Basically these are fixed pixel displays. If you've got a 4K display and you feed it a 4K signal, it can't get any sharper. Simple as that. And it can't get any softer either unless you feed it a lower signal, which then has to be upscaled. In terms of sharpness controls on flat panel TVs, this is a, a way of digitally altering the image to appear perceivably sharper. Basically, it adds edge enhancement to the picture. Dial this up too much and you can get haloing around edges. And indeed, reducing it on some TVs can add an artificial blurring effect, essentially smoothing over finer details. Next up, we've got something called Gamma. Yeah, that's not very self-explanatory. In fact, it's a bit of a silly name to describe what it actually does. Essentially, changing the Gamma perceivably increases or decreases the brightness of the image. How it works, essentially, is controlling the transitions between black to white. Select a lower Gamma, and the transitions will happen more quickly, thus giving you perhaps a more washed out image but at the same time, it can be used to brighten up shadow details. So if you're viewing in a bright room, a lower gamma will actually work better. Whereas selecting a higher gamma will basically darken the image somewhat. 
It will give bright scenes more pop, but dark areas will appear suitably blacker. Essentially, the transitions between black to white are happening more slowly here. Another common setting on most TVs is overscan. Basically, this used to be used back in the old CRT days as well, in order to basically hide artifacts at the top, bottom or sides of the picture. In this case, on a flat panel TV, overscan works by upscaling the picture and cutting off the edges. Thus, you do lose some resolution. Ideally, you want to have this setting turned off for all high definition content, as there's no real need to use it, especially with 4K, if you want to have a one-to-one -one pixel mapped image. Another common feature is the use of local dimming. Now, this can generally be called smart LED on Samsung TVs or adaptive backlight control on the Panasonic. And basically, this has lots of different modes depending on your TV. You can have individual sort of backlight dimming if you've got lots of different zones, or on some TVs, the entire backlight will just be raised and lowered. And basically, the idea here is to lower the backlight to make blacks dark in dark scenes. Or in high dynamic range content, for example, it's designed to push the panel's maximum luminance level up, so you get bright highlights on the screen. The ability to smooth off motion is another feature regularly found on the majority of mid-range and higher-end TVs. Basically, it's a combination of frame interpolation and black frame insertion, and it has many names. For example, Sony calls it Motion Flow, and on the Panasonic, it's known as Intelligent Frame Creation. And usually, if there's a good implementation on the TV, it'll be divided into three parts, a de-blur function, a de-judder mode, and then there's a black frame insertion, sometimes known as Impulse. The de-judder function adds motion interpolation. Essentially, you could describe it as taking a 30 FPS game and then artificially converting it so it looks like it's running at 60 frames per second. Whereas the de-blur function acts a little bit differently. This tends to create more of a stuttered motion to reduce the kind of smearing you get on quite a lot of LCD flat panels. And lastly, we have black frame insertion. Now, with all modern flat panel TVs, LCDs, OLEDs, these are sample and hold displays. And that basically means when one frame is displayed, it's held until the next one is displayed. And that basically creates a kind of motion smearing. Now, it's not the TV that creates the smearing, it's our actual vision, because the human eye still sees the ghost image of the previous frame when the next is displayed. So what black frame insertion does is insert a black frame in between two actual frames of content. This does result in some flicker, but it breaks our kind of retinal persistence, and this enables us to see an image that basically has a higher perceived resolution with less in the way of blurring, sometimes up to say 1080 lines on a good implementation. Okay, so there you go, a quick guide on how the basic HDTV controls work. I hope this video has given you a better understanding on what the controls do and how you can use them to get a better picture from your HDTV. And indeed, on that note, you should definitely check out our settings guide, which goes into more depth on which settings you should adjust in order to get a more accurate picture for both gaming and general multimedia viewing, whether that be SDR or HDR. But for now, if you enjoyed this video, don't forget to like and subscribe. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.